Assalamu alaikum welcome back to coding with T today we are going to learn how to create a text field in flutter as you can see on your screen we are in the section 3 and we are about to create the third video of the section at the end of the section you can see we are about to create a complete form in the previous video we created how to move from one screen to another because when the form will be completed on the press of the form button or the submit form we will get all these values and we will show these values on the details page as you can see on your screen that in this tutorial we are going to create a text field like you can see on your screen and when the submit form will be clicked we will pass the data to next screen so let's say we want to add a product name as so this is uh, the product name and this is the product description we have added when we are going to click on the submit form it will take the fields data from this product name and also from the product description and pass that data to next screen so in this tutorial we are also going to learn how we can pass the data from this screen to the next screen so when click on this submit form which is the heading then we have a subheading right here so this is what we are going to create don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so let's get started open android studio okay in here you can see that we in the previous tutorial we created two screens form.dart and the details.dart this is the form.dart and this is the outline button we created and on the click of this outline button you can see we have navigator.push and when this I, uh, button is going to be clicked we will be redirected to this details screen which has nothing to show yet but only a text which is saying details screen in here so on the click of this back button we will be head back to the previous screen so this was uh, for the previous tutorial for today's tutorial because we're going to create a text field or at the end we have to create a complete form so for that we first have to remove this center and we have to create a list view because our form can be scrollable so for that we need a list view let me just extract this refactor extract it as a method close this method and for now I'm not going to call this button first let's just create container because we need some padding as a child we are going to create a list view as its list view have some children's and as a children we first have to create our very first text field so to create a text field we basically have two methods to create a text field designing or creating a text field is very easy in the flutter we just need to decide which type of design we want to use and then we need to hook that or we need a simple ID because we want to get that value entered by the user to our design we want to show that we want to store in the database we want to as in our case we will forward that value to the detail screen so only these two steps are needed so first we have to see what two types of text field we have so the first one is a simple text field and then we have a text form field these are the two types let's save it and you can see application is running currently these both look same but when we are going to head towards this text field let's add a decoration input decoration and inside this input decoration for the text field we have hint text as a hint text let's say it's a product name and also let's add icon and same let me just create this input decoration for text form field as well so to create that let's add decoration just remove this Instead of this hint, let's use label text. Let's save the code. So for the first field, you can see that we don't have any hint text written over there. But when we are going to remove this, we have the hint text or the placeholder text back to our position. And in the second field, you can see we don't have the hint text, but we created a label text instead. So the label text has been pushed uh, to the top. We can also add outline style as a border create an input uh, outline input border let's save it as you can see we have the the first one is the underlined and the second one is basically the outline input border and the icon is uh, currently on the outside but if you want to place the icon inside we have a prefix icon and as that we can also add icon any icon that you want to add and for that we have to remove this icon let's save the code and you can see that that icon has been added so we have to choose between only one icon either the icon itself or the prefix icon i'm going to use text form field instead of text field remove this let's save the code and let's change this icon to prefix icon 
okay we completed the first step to design or to choose from two text form fields and we selected the text form field instead of text field and we designed it now the second step is we want to get the data from this text field and we want to display that data to uh, for example on some text so first let's create a text from where or on which on which we are going to display the product name product name is and on the top let's create a variable which will be private name it as product name so basically we want to display whatever is inside this product name in here add a dollar sign and paste this right so now we want to show the updated values in here so to do that we have two options the first one is inside the text sorry not inside this decoration inside this text form field we have a on change property using this on change we will get whatever the values entered inside the text field this is a variable name you can add any name you want so i'm going to update the state because we want to modify this text so to modify a static field we have we have a stateful widget so to update the stateful widget we have set state method so to call it i am just going to create a private function update text pass value in it it is a function so we have to call set state we know how to call the set state we learned in the previous tutorial so to set the state we have just update this product name is equal to value whatever the updated value has been passed to this update text and inside this on change we are going to call this update text and we are going to pass this updated value in it so that's it now let's try to run the application and our text is right there product name is null from the top you can see that whenever the text is being changed in the text field it is going to execute this on changed and this on change is calling this function this function is basically just setting the state to a new value right so this new value is right here so this is the first way which is not a recommended way so the second way is that we are going to assign an id or uh, in the flutter we are going to call it as a controller so don't get confused with the controller it is simply an id so you can take it as an id so for the id we have controller so we have to assign it a unique id or a unique controller name so let's make final product controller so it is text editing controller i have named it just a product controller it's a unique for now assign this to this controller so basically this controller is now going to get whatever the updated state is we don't have to call the on change so instead of this product name let's call this product controller dot text we have to add curly brackets around this like this so this text is the value that has been entered in the text field so this controller is currently getting everything that is related to this text form field which is the product name and we also display this product name dot text inside our text field here okay in here you can see that our uh, text has been displayed so now let's try to add something in here press the enter button and you can see that we don't have anything written on the text because we are not currently actively listening to this controller so let me just go to the code and let's just save this again and you can see that the text from the top has been displayed in the text field so let's add something else now let's again save the changes and you can see that the values has been updated but uh, they are being updated when the application is being saved or run again and again so this controller is currently storing the state but we have to actively listen to this controller to override press control o the init state the in it state this one this is basically the initializing state so we have to call super dot initialize state and next we have a controller we are saying that this controller is going to listen we have to add listener and as a listener we are going to call this is a function so we already have created a function which is this update text so let's just simply call this so it is going to call this 
and it is going to update the state and in the update state we just going to call this product controller dot text so we will get the text from here instead of fetching the values from or to creating on change method and pass that value in here so we are basically going to get that value from this controller and assign to this product name now let's save this code and in here let's try to run and you can see that it's being displayed in the text below so for example we don't want to update our current form in that case we don't need this init state but instead of this we also don't want to call the set state because we don't want to update the state instead of this when the user is going to click on this online button so let's just instead of this text we are not going to display it let's create let's call this my button we created in the previous tutorial let's save it and you can see that button has been added at the top let's add sized box and add some height so we can see the difference between button and the text field so now open this function and instead and instead of directly calling this navigator.push we also want to pass the values to our details here to our details dot to pass the values to this screen you can see this is the constructor of the details now ins ins inside this constructor as we learn in our section 1 that how we can pass the values to the constructor we simply first have to create a variable which is string type private variable product name and in here we are going to call this dot product name and that's it so to remove this error we need to required because whenever someone is going to call this details class it should have to pass this product name so now it's not a constant constructor it has been mod modified so it should not start with the underscore because it's a dynamic it's not it's not private so this is a product name now to display that product name instead of this center in here i'm going to create again a container with some padding as a child let's create a list view as a children of list view let's add a list style because in the list style we are going to display the details as a leading property for now i'm going to add static icon but as a title of this list style we am going to pass whatever the name we are going to get in this product name so let's head back to this form screen you can see in the navigator.push when we are going to call this details it is saying that please give me whatever the value you want to pass to this details so for now i want i want to pass so to pass the value in here i am going to call my controller product controller here we have to call this product name and then we have to pass the value so now let's run the application let's just remove this add this text submit the form and you can see that it has been directed to this list style and the list style is currently showing this this icon and a title here and also we want to go to the details if we want to show the title in the app bar so we can instead of this text we can say it's a product name remove this constant save it and you can see that it is now added let's try to remove this change this submit again and you can see that it has been added as a title and also in the form below okay now head back to the details and in here you can see that we created a controller the last thing is let me just overwrite press ctrl o again and call the dispose and in this dispose we have to dispose our controller dot dispose and then we have to call super dot dispose basically uh, we created this controller remember this we have to destroy this we have to destroy it to avoid any memory leaks or avoid the accessibility so we can created this controller we have to remove this controller we created this controller for this text field so we assign this to this text field now using this controller uh, before it is not being disposed so this dispose will be automatically called when the widget has been destroyed so this is the widget when this widget has been destroyed this dispose will be called automatically but before disposing and after creating we have the product controller assigned to this text field 
it will hold everything related to this text form field so using this product controller on the press of this outline button we simply call the navigation and move to the next screen and we, uh, while moving we also pass the value we get from this text field you can pass multiple values and in the upcoming tutorial we are going to create a model and using that model we will pass all the values to the detail screen okay so that's it for this tutorial i hope you learned something new if if you learn something new please like the video and if you are new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe it and hit the bell icon to get notified you can get all the videos all the playlist link from the down below in the description as you can see on your screen and also from the right top corner so that's it for this tutorial thank you for watching take care allah office